Okay, let's go ahead and solve for x in this equation right here. So uh, some of you might be saying, well, you know, this is, you know, what's the purpose of this problem? Well, the purpose is to practice very important algebra skills that you'd absolutely need to know. And uh, in algebra, you're oftentimes you're asked to solve for a particular variable. So you can see here um, we have x, y, and z kind of uh, dispersed throughout this equation, but we want to solve for x. In other words, we want to rewrite this equation such that we have x equals, and then whatever the case over here, what if this is going to, obviously going to be the answer. So we want x equals. So um, the directions for this problem would be solve for x or write this equation in terms of x. That's another way of stating this, but uh, this is very important um, skill uh, not only in algebra, in science as well. So if you're dealing with mathematical formulas, like uh, let's say, for example, E equals MC squared. Okay, of course, hopefully you recognize this is the famous Einstein formula for uh, theory of relativity. But uh, energy equals mass times constant squared. But maybe we want to write this in terms of C. Okay, so we would have to solve this equation in terms of C. This is the kind of skill that we're going to be practicing here. So it does have its purpose, you know, other than just saying, yeah, we're just a bunch of busy work. No, no, nothing is uh, going to be uh, wasted here in terms of your time and effort if you're looking to really uh, be strong in algebra. Okay, so I'm going to get through this. Uh, I'm going to go through this problem step by step, but um, I certainly encourage all, all of you that watch my videos to try this problem on your own. You should pause the video and see what you come up with. Um, I also have a lot of um, additional videos on this topic. Uh, it's kind of named in various ways. You can find this in my algebra, pre-algebra playlist. Uh, so like solve for the indicated variable or, or solve for this particular variable in this equation. This is a very um, important skill and one that uh, a lot of math students are kind of weak in. Or, you know, a lot of students, well, let me just say it uh, more plainly, a lot of students are weak in. So you you got to uh, really strengthen the skill in terms of solving for a particular variable when there's multiple variables in an equation. Of course, we'll practice this here in just one, one second. I'm going to kind of do a quick review to help you along the way as well. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that statement. Pretty bold statement, right? But uh, I really, you know, truly feel uh, that way. I've been working at my uh, math help program literally for, uh, you know, well over 10 years. And when I teach, I don't, I teach in a real comprehensive way. So that's why so much content and information is in uh, all my courses. But uh, basically, uh, by the way, too, you can find uh, a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, gonna be launching pre-calculus here shortly. Um, but I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, AccuPlace, or CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can definitely help you out. There's a lot of math on all those exams. And if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on the exam. So let me help you out. Just go to my website. You can check out my full course catalog there. Now, if I don't have your exam, let me know. Just uh, go to our contact form and I'll help you out the best way I can. I also do a lot with independent learners uh, like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system that you might be interested in, and then obviously help those of you that are just struggling in your current math course. Now, um, if you're serious about wanting to really learn math, okay, you gotta be serious about this. If you're not serious about it, then yeah, watch a video and you know, uh, you do what you're going to do, but if you're truly serious, you want to listen to me, okay, on this one, because over decades of teaching mathematics, it's apparent to me that those students who work hard every day to take great math notes, they always do well, okay, very well in terms of their grades, and they really learn the material, and the reverse is true. Those students were like me back in the 1980s. What was they doing back in the 1980s when I was in school? Uh, well, yeah, I was talking to my friends. I would take notes, but it, they kind of were like scribble scratch. And generally, they were um, communication to my best friends in class. And like, hey, what are we going to do on the weekend? Because we had no cell phones back in those days. And you know, you know, there were cell phones, but they were like huge. And they cost like $5,000. So, And you couldn't text. And you know, there was no internet. But we still managed 
to do the wrong thing, if you could believe that. Okay, it wasn't until later uh, on and uh, when I got into college that I learned that you can really, truly, there is no shortcuts. Okay, if you really want to learn something, you got to work hard, and that means you got to take great notes. This is the way you're going to stay focused. Okay, focus is the key to success in mathematics and anything. But um, um, as you need, uh, as you're improving in your note taking, you can use my notes if you'd like. Uh, I offer pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so here we go. Let's get into this whole problem here. Let me kind of uh, get all this away so we can focus in on this. All right, so we want to solve for x, and I have the solution all written out, but let's just take a look at what we're dealing with. We have x, y, z, okay, uh, and that's pretty much it. So we have three different variables, and we have an x here, we have an x there, and we have another x here. So we want to solve for x. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's take a look at a basic, basic um, example, all right, of uh, working with multiple formulas and uh, multiple variables in a formula. So let's take this basic formula here and uh, hopefully some of you recognize what this is this is a physics formula by the way physics is such an awesome subject um, tons of uh, obviously math is the language of physics and math is the language of a lot of things but if you um, have a chance to take physics take that course it's awesome anyways this is uh, the formula that says force is equal to mass times acceleration all right so we have this right here uh, it's solved for f or this formula is uh, in terms or written in terms of f but let's write this in terms of let's say um, m okay so basically it's the same relationship force is equal to mass times acceleration but let's uh, solve for m so how can i do that well what you want to do is you want to treat the variable that you want to solve for as um, a variable okay you're like well, okay well that makes sense but what i mean by that is that these other variables, F and A, treat them as numbers. Think of them as numbers temporarily. So let's solve for M, and let's just pretend, let's just mentally replace F with like a 10, and we have our M, and then let's replace that A with like a 2. Okay, so remember, we're thinking of M as uh, a variable, because we're trying to solve for it, and this mentally, okay, in our uh, kind of our, uh, our mind's eye, we're going to think of F and A. We're going to treat them as like numbers. So here are some numbers, okay, temporarily. Let's just see what happens to solve for M. So I have 10 is equal to M times 2. Well, in algebra, M times 2 is the same thing as 2M. Okay, so we can even write it that way. Two, uh, 10 is equal to 2 times M. Remember, multiplication, 3 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 3. Order does not make a difference. All right, so here is our M. So if I want to solve for m, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2, okay? So that's what we need to do to solve for m. And then I have right here, let me kind of give myself a little bit more room. Okay, so m is equal to 10 over 2, but this 10 was kind of like the f spot, right? That was representing the f variable. And this 2 here was representing the A variable. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. You can kind of see what's going on. So M is equal to F over A, force over acceleration. So that's how you want to kind of think of it. But let's kind of do this again. We'll clear this away. All right. And I, this can be a little confusing initially. But with practice, you'll be okay. All right, so here... I want to solve for m. Okay, I need to divide both sides of the formula by uh, a to get m by itself. So m is equal to uh, f over a. So if you understand this basic example, okay, and how you know you can kind of replace numbers just to kind of make sure you're taking the right steps, well then we're going to effectively be using the same techniques uh, with this uh, next example. Okay, well there's a few other little things too that we need to be doing, and here is the work. Um, actually, it's not even all the work, but I'm going to go through this. Um, I don't want to say too rapidly, but if you don't understand my steps, just you know, you can watch the video again. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, take notes, 
and uh, check out additional videos that I've done on this topic in my algebra playlist on my YouTube channel so you can practice this. Okay, so here's um, the deal. We want to solve for x. Okay, we want to get x is equal to it. So what you want to do is you, we need to get all the x's by themselves. we got to cluster up all the x's. we got to kind of group them together. So that's the first main thing that you want to do. And there's a lot of different steps uh, that we need to do to get all the x's kind of grouped in together, all by you know, by themselves, side by side, and you'll see here in a second. All right, so, whoops, I didn't want to do that. So the first thing we have to do is we have this 2 and we have this 6 uh, outside of parentheses. So these situations here, you have to use the distributor property, okay? So here we have 5xyz plus, now I'm going to multiply this 2 by this, this uh, 2 by that term, and then this 6 uh, times that, and 6... Uh, times that term, and we get the following, okay? We get this, 5xyz, 2xyz plus, right? This is what the result of doing is, 2 times z, that's 2z, 6yz, and then 6 times this x, that's 6x, okay? So at this point, let's kind of uh, take a look at this. And again, I want to get all the x's together. So anything that has an x in it, I want to kind of get... Uh, next to one another. So this guy has an X. I'm going to have to move him over to the left-hand side next to this one here. This has an X and this has an X. So my objective is to get this, this, and this all kind of uh, you know, next to one another. But I'm going to have to work on moving this 6X over. And I'm also going to have to work on getting this 2Z over here. Okay. So what I want to do on the left-hand side of the equation I want to get all my x's grouped together. So I'm going to have to get that 2z over here, and I'm going to have to move this uh, 6x over there. So let's work on the 2z first. Okay. So how do I get rid of this uh, positive 2z on this side? Well, I can just uh, subtract it away from both sides of the equation. And when I do that, I get uh, 5xyz plus 2xy. That's all that's going to be remaining now over here because uh, we got rid of that and then this gets kind of um, uh, it's going to be behind this 6x term over here so we get 6yz uh, plus uh, 6x minus uh, 2z okay so hopefully that makes sense and we're just doing uh, things one step at a time remember I, I want to get rid of that uh, 2z put it over on this side I just finished doing that now I got to get that 6x over here because I want to get all my x's on the left-hand side of the equation because I'm going to be solving for x. Okay, so how do I get rid of, um, or how do I move this positive 6x now over here? Well, what I need to do now is subtract 6x from both sides of the equation, all right? Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to get uh, 5xyz plus 2xy minus 6x. Okay, that's the result of that. And then here, this 6x went away, right, because I subtracted uh, I uh, subtracted away that 6x, so I'm left with 6yz minus uh, 2z on this side of the equation. Okay, so this is uh, like the first series of steps we need to do. I need to get all my x's on the left-hand side. Now, at this time, okay, you need to know a little bit about factoring. Okay, we're going to be factoring out the greatest common factor. So, depending on where you're at in your algebra education, yeah, this still this might be a little bit confusing, but I don't think it's uh, too bad. Okay, let's let's just walk through it. So notice now that I got all my terms next to one another. This one has an x in it. This one has an x, and this one has an x. And there's nothing else here. So here's where my x's are at in these uh, respective uh, terms. Okay. So what I can do is I can factor out this x. Okay. So I can write this as x times this expression right here. Okay. Notice. The uh, 5yz doesn't have the x, but if I multiply that x times this, I get back to 5xyz. Same thing with this. Um, I'm left with the 2y, and then here I'm just left with this uh, 6. Because if I use a distributor property and I distribute this x back in, I will get back to this. Okay? So this is going to be the key, all right, to uh, really solving for x in this particular um, equation, right? I got to factor out the x, and the only way I was able to factor it out is to get this expression, this entire expression with all the x's on the left hand side. Okay, so if you understand this, then, you know, uh, that's excellent, right? So again, we still have our 6yz minus 2z 
uh, on the other side of the equation. Now, how do I get um, x? Well, what I need to do now, I got this whole thing that I factored out. I got my x times this. Well, if I divide both sides of the equation by this big thing, I will get x by itself because anything divided by itself is 1. Okay, so this is our final answer. x is going to be 6yz minus 2z over 5yz plus 2y minus 6. Okay, now if you were able to do this problem all on your own, then I must give you a happy face with a big mohawk, okay, and an A plus and 100%. And I'm going to give you like three stars because this wasn't the easiest of problems, okay, so that's very, very good. All right. Um, now, uh, if you were like just watching the problem, trying to figure things out and you're like, OK, yeah, I understand, you know, uh, what you've done, but I'm still shaky on it. That's normal. OK, don't don't panic or nothing like that. So I'm going to give you a couple suggestions. One, I have tons of videos again uh, on my YouTube channel uh, in my algebra playlist that they'll reference like solving for a particular variable, solve for a specified variable or they'll have literal equations or formulas does a really great um, videos to kind of follow up and continue to practice this uh, skill very important algebra skill um, or you could just go and sign up for my algebra course as well uh, if you really really want to uh, master this stuff but this is critical essential skills for algebra okay all right so if this video helped you out in some way please consider smashing that like button that helps me out and if you're new to my youtube channel again please uh, consider subscribing I've uh, been on YouTube for over 10 years, have over 1,000 videos on my channel, and I'm making new content all the time. Um, basic to advanced math, uh, you'll find on my channel organized in various playlists. So all that is uh, there for you. Okay, I teach so people can learn from me. If you like my teaching style, my, um, you know, my whole mission is to try to uh, teach math in a clear and understandable way. Right, and I try to explain things so we can make it less complicated and, and more understandable. Um, so hopefully, uh, if you like my teaching style, I have a lot of content here for you. But my best uh, math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.